Hi, I'm Hazel, and today we're looking at how to get started as a fresh level 120. This is a step-by-step -step guide on both what to do and in what order to do it to help you get geared up for 8.3 content as a solo player. Of course, if you have a guild of geared all-stars ready to run you through a ton of Mythic Plus, you should absolutely do that. However, if you are not blessed with such friends or you just don't want to bother them, here's how to do it by yourself. For today's example, I have this very freshly 120 warrior. She is item level 259 with 3 minutes played at 120. I had leveled her with mostly gathering, which is why her gear is such stinky garbage. Before we start, I've got the optional step 0, clean up your quest log and bags. This isn't strictly necessary, however, it's going to be easier to keep your goals straight when your bags and quest log are free of the ghosts of 70 levels ago. Okay, the official step 1 is mail over any bind on account gear. This only applies if we're setting up an alt, if this is your very first 120, you'll start at the next step. Assuming that this is indeed an alt, dig through your bags and bank for those 415 black empire pieces. Then fill any gaps with the 385 benthic stuff. Black empire gear mostly comes from rares in 8.3 invasion zones. If you're short on that, the benthic gear is available from the Najatar vendor for 5 mana pearls apiece. Those will cover every gear slot except for rings, trinkets, and weapons. Now I do like to pick up a benthic cloak. Yes, you'll replace it with your legendary in a few steps, but that's going to take a while and the extra item level early is nice. So after mailing over BOA gear, my warrior is now item level 336. Step one and a half, a little baby one, is to unlock world quests at the boat. We won't dive into them yet, but you're in the area anyway, so you may as well unlock them. The quest is called Uniting Kul Tiris or Uniting Zandalar, and you can do it right away. Step two is to start the Najatar questline. There's a few key things here. You should automatically get the quest called the Wolf's Offensive for Alliance or the War Chief's Order for Horde after zoning into your BFA capital city. If the turn-in for that quest is missing, you may need to select an enemy foothold to pursue first. You shouldn't have to do the whole thing, just choosing one let me turn in my Wolf's Offensive quest. So you head off into Najatar and follow that line. The first trio of quests includes Dark Tides, which gives you a 370 weapon after killing a quest boss. Do that one first and you've got yourself a starter weapon. Keep going with the Najatar story for a few more quests to unlock the main hub, right up until Magni shows up and offers essential empowerment. That brings us to step 3, upgrading your Heart of Azeroth and unlocking essences. This will give your neck a huge boost as well as giving you your first essence. Follow Magni's questline through Neltharian's lair until you get your Crucible of Flame. Your next item level as well as Azerite level should jump way up, and that essence is nice to have too. At this point, you should be able to fully spec any Azerite gear that you're wearing. After that, my warrior is now up to item level 352. Next, step 3.5 is another optional one, and that's checking the auction house. At this point, if you're still missing decent gear in any slots, check the auction house for cheap item level 400 uncanny gear. You can take a look at the rings and trinkets also, but those tend to be more expensive. You don't have to spend gold, but if you can get any big upgrades for less than 5k, I would strongly consider it. We are trying to boost our raw item level as high as we can to push up the level of world quest and emissary gear. Extra item level early will also make your life easier as you are chomping through the cloak quest line. It's fine either way, just something to think about. Step 4 is to look through the available world quests and emissaries for gear upgrades. I am using the add-on world quest list to see all the world quests at once and sort by rewards. Depending on how well you did for the first few steps, you could be seeing 415 and 420 gear. If your options are still below 400, you can come back after the cloak quest line and they should improve some. However, I wouldn't stress too much about waiting. If it's a big upgrade, just do it now and get what you can. There will always be more world quests. Time for step 5, which is get your cloak. This has some big item level jumps in it, but it's also several hours worth of questing, so buckle up. You should automatically get the first quest after step 3. It's an unwelcome advisor for Alliance and Return of the Black Prince for the Horde. If you've done all of this before, don't forget that you can skip the instant scenario inside the Halls of Origination by talking to Magni, and Mogashon Vaults by talking to Raden. As far as I can tell, you cannot skip the third scenario in Blackwing Descent where you actually get the cloak. Along the way, you'll get some 440 Corrupted Bracers along with a few more pieces of gear. Your new cloak starts at 470, which should be a pretty good boost. Once you've gotten through that, I've got the optional but pretty decent step 6. PvP. I know. 
If you can scrape together just 500 conquest, you will get a 440 weapon, which makes a big difference. You can get conquest from doing call to arms quests in war mode or from the usual RBGs in Arena. The call to arms weekly also gives a 445 piece. Pick up the quests on your boat and in your PvP hub, found here for Horde and here for Alliance. Also, don't forget to turn on war mode in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. You don't necessarily have to be good for this, just persistent. You can find call to arms groups in the group finder for some safety in numbers. To be quite honest, I don't usually bother with a PvP on a new character. However, if you're still using that 370 weapon and you just can't find a better one anywhere, this is your best bet. And that brings us to our seventh and final step, which is to try your luck with miscellaneous activities and then play the World Quest waiting game. If you are still hurting for a trinket, go unlock Mechagon and get your pocket-sized computational device. That one starts at 400. You can head out and do some world bosses, the newest ones drop 445 gear. As you keep playing the character, you should continue getting gear from new world quests along with Assault and Horrific Visions. Those last two should also be giving you Echoes of Nihilatha, which you can use to buy any rank 3 essences that you unlocked previously. At this point, you should be pretty decently caught up for a fresh character and ready for whatever it is that you have your heart set on next. Following these steps on my warrior took me 4 hours of in-game played time and got me from 259 up to 418. With less BOA gear, you might need a week or two of world quests and assaults to catch up, but it's still very doable. Thanks for watching, best of luck with your new alts, catch me live on Twitch if you're into that sort of thing, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.